Hi folks, welcome back to Frequently Asked Questions video number five. Sorry it's taken so long to get a new video out. We've been working pretty hard to get ready for our open house and we had that this past weekend and it was a huge success. And I will be doing a video about that sometime in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. I've also had several people mention to me that they haven't been getting their notifications when I release a new video. So you may wanna check your subscriptions area down in the bottom left of your menu and choose manage and there should be an option for notification by email. YouTube's made a lot of changes recently to their site so some people aren't getting their notifications anymore. So on to question number one. You have to heat your greenhouse a lot. Why don't you add a plastic film on the inside of the dome or cover the dome in a blanket to help insulate it or use triple wall polycarbonate? Well, there's a bunch of answers for that. Um, I chose to use a 10 millimeter double wall polycarbonate for this greenhouse, which allows 82% uh, of light come through and has an R value of 1.7. If I go with a triple wall polycarbonate, that only allows 76% of light through and increases the R value to 2.4, which isn't a lot of extra insulation. So I chose to go with this material, plus um, a little bit of cost savings with that. Uh, heating the greenhouse isn't very expensive over the winter, so I chose this method. Also with adding a film on the inside, it would help to increase the uh, efficiency of the polycarbonate. However, by adding that extra layer, it also helps to trap condensate between the polycarbonate and the film. It would also keep the cedar structure much more damp and increase the rate that it would rot. So it's better off keeping that material exposed to the air and keeping it much drier. It still does get a lot of moisture just from the condensate dripping off of the polycarbonate itself but it definitely stays a lot drier than if I had sealed it between uh, multiple layers. Also, between those two layers, you can get a lot of bugs in there. They like to go in and can't find their way out, so it just starts to get um, pretty dirty in between the two layers. Question number two. What is your opinion on plastics? Well, this can be a loaded question, so I'll try to tread on it carefully. Um, I do have a lot of different plastics in this greenhouse and I'll just list them off quickly. Uh, first of all, it's the polycarbonate glazing. Um, it's the same polycarbonate that was banned in using baby bottles, which contains BPA or biphenyl A. And basically, it's what we get to deal with. There are a couple other greenhouse plastics that can be used. I think Solex is one of them. The um, light transmission through them isn't quite as high. Um, but most people are, use the polycarbonate and if there is any off-gassing, I don't know if there is or not, but if there is, um, most of that would just off-gas into the atmosphere and really wouldn't get into the rest of the system. My tanks are made from HDPE, which is high density polyethylene. It's probably one of the best plastics you can use. It's the same material that is used in milk bottles and a lot of other food packaging. So these are probably some of the safest things that I can use in this greenhouse. All my plumbing uses PVC. That's one of the most debated plastics that can be used within a system. PVC uses different types of plasticizers which are used as a hardening agent for the material. So you can have all types of different plasticizers added to it and most commonly uh, lead can be used. Uh, most of the piping in here, at least on the supply lines, they're all one inch and they are used for potable water. Um, again, I don't really know what's in it, but they were rated for potable water. Uh, the drain lines are two inch, they're standard sewer lines, and I basically didn't look into uh, what was in those. Uh, usually the worst PVCs that you could get are the softer ones. Um, they contain all kinds of really nasty things in them. Things like garden hoses, uh, the Intex swimming pools, I see those being used a lot in aquaponics. That's a soft PVC and not something that I really would want to get into um, exposing my fish and plants too. I also have a lot of polystyrene which I use for the rafts. Um, it's also known as styrofoam which uses benzene during the production and it is a known carcinogenic. And I dug up this quote online uh, that the industry has put out there and it states since the early 90s the polystyrene industry has conducted tests and provided the FDA with data that demonstrates that the minor amount of styrene and ethyl benzene 
that migrates out of food contact polymers do not pose a health risk. You can make your own decision on that, but basically uh, for lack of other materials to use, I stick with the polystyrene. Question number three. Where does the web for deb username come from? Well, as many of you know, that is my channel name and also my username on many of the different forums that I poke around on. Uh, that name came from my wife, Deb, and I basically stole her YouTube account when I started doing videos. Uh, we originally started doing a few videos on miscellaneous things around our property. Um, the, one of the more popular ones that we have is our pileated woodpecker that we have making nests and making all types of neat calls. So you may want to check out that video. It's pretty cool. And so I basically stuck with that name and YouTube doesn't allow you to change your names to anything else. So uh, that's what we're using. Question number four. Where will you end up when finished in terms of volume of fish tank and the total surface area of grow beds? Also, how much of your total grow space is raft and how much will be media beds? Well, currently I have 184 square feet of rafts and just by coincidence, it's also 184 square feet of media, totaling 368 square feet. I actually wanted to have a little bit more media beds in my system, uh, mainly to hold some of the tomato plants, my pineapple, of course, and some of the other plants that I don't feel would work as well in the rafts. The other 184 square feet of rafts works really well for a product like the lettuce. So you can only have so much lettuce uh, for personal consumption and I really do enjoy having the tomatoes and the cucumbers in the media beds. The system holds 3,000 gallons between all the tanks and the beds and that's if they're completely full, most of the time they are. And um, housing around 70 koi and goldfish and they range from 6 inches to about 14 inches in size. And I run the system really lean so there is definitely room for expansion with adding more fish into the system. Question number five. Would you build a larger dome someday? This is a 32 and a half foot dome. It's a frequency three, three eighths dome. Um, if you go to a larger dome, usually the next stage is a 40 foot dome, which is a frequency four, a three eighths dome. And the difference in square footage goes from 820 square feet to 1151 square feet, plus or minus, or a 40% increase in floor space. It gets a lot more complicated when you go from a 3V to a 4V dome. Um, I have five different lengths of struts in this building and the 4V I believe goes to 10. I have 45 hubs that I had to make up for this building and the 4Vs, I believe it was 71. There are five different triangle shapes in this building and that jumps up to 11 with a uh, 4V dome. So the complexity does increase a lot when you uh, increase the size of the dome. Most likely, if I was going to do anything bigger, I would go with a standard traditional uh, commercial greenhouse. Once you start getting into a larger scale, you really would be much more helpful to have nice square grow beds, especially the rafts where you can start on one end and push your product down to the other. These grow beds work really well that I have in here, but the custom shape can be a little bit complicated and tricky to move the rafts around and does leave some of the water exposed uh, to the light, so I do get a little algae buildup in those areas. So that's about it for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and also join us on Facebook or Google+. We'll see you soon. Thanks.